Welcome to the Medical Device Made Easy podcast. Here is Munir Lazuzi from easymedicaldevice.com. And today we'll talk about risk management. So this is a topic that is really huge. I think I will have maybe many guests talking about that. Um, but today we have a, a special guest, which is a, a NASA ambassador, uh, as, he, as he qualifies on, also on LinkedIn, and he's also working in medical devices or, uh, as a consultant in design. So it is Kailash Kalido. So Kailash, welcome to the Medical Device Made Easy podcast. Thank you so much for having me, Monir. It's really a pleasure to uh, to get involved in one of these podcasts. Uh, I'm a big fan of your podcast, uh, your other podcasts, and your courses as well. So great! Thank you, thank you very much. I mean, really fun. Also, the fact that you are NASA ambassador, so it's like, wow, what are you going to space? What are you doing there? So but, yeah. um, that's more a voluntary thing that I'm doing. Uh, it's more a STEM education uh, and a community based effort that I'm uh, I'm contributing uh, outside my work. So. Yeah, that's what right. I, I guess I hold. So just for the audience, where are you located? No, I'm uh, I'm from the Bay Area in San, uh, somewhere near San Francisco. Great. And so yeah, it's uh, uh, for me, it's, it's Friday. For you, it's still Thursday, actually. <laughs> it's still Thursday. Uh, we have another 30 minutes or so. Okay, great. So Kailash, uh, as I said, the, the topic of today will be risk management. Um, so just for, because uh, as we said, so you are also working on a, as a, on a design development and you are working on those kind of, of topics uh, for medical devices. Uh, so um, first, maybe if you had to summarize in few words or one minute or, or less than one minute, what is risk management? Because maybe some people say, yeah, risk management is just a document or whatever, but what it is and what it, why do we need that? So it's very important for any product to, uh, to make sure that we, do, we get rid of the de-risk the product before releasing it to the market. In medical devices and uh, critically acclaimed devices in critical domains such as aerospace and medical, it's very important that we de-risk um, the uh, project uh, and, the, and the project path and the product to a level where uh, we don't compromise on safety. Yeah. So if it's going to touch on safety, then it's a very big thing in uh, the med tech domain. So uh, in, in, when we talk about risk management, it's not only, I suppose, for medical devices. It's related to yeah, like uh, aerospace also. Management is a broad topic. So you can apply it anywhere, like uh, in any domain, in any circumstance. So I'm I, I, when I talk about risk management here, I'm talking from a technical risk management point of view. There, is, there are also business risks. There are scheduled risks that you can go over, uh, budget risks and so on. So those are more project risks. This is more a product risk where uh, if you don't address certain points in the product development life cycle of your project, um, it might end up costing way more. And the earlier you find it, the better. So de-risking is very important at a very, very early stage. So uh, when we talk about risk management, uh, I suppose, um, I know there are some standards for that also. Um, so um, are those standards common to everywhere in the world or there are specific standards to follow? Like oh, there are specific US? standards across, do across domains. For example, in medical devices, right? So we have the 14971 standard. Uh, um, that is the overarching standard for risk management. Um, so it ties in with the uh, product development standard of 13485 and uh, your, uh, in my world, like in, in the United States, we have to even comply to 21 CFR FDA regulations. So exactly. all those uh, get tied into uh, the product development life cycle as well. Exactly. So um, when we are talking about product life cycle now, the, the main question that we are asking um, when we are starting to develop uh, a product uh, is where, when do I need to start my risk management? Should I wait that I have the finished product and then start now to think, okay, let's uh, list the risk or should from the feasibility phase where I think of a product, I should start to think about maybe the risks or what is your suggestion or what is your advice? So in, in my experience, uh, I have seen, I, I have executed waterfall projects in the past, but the trouble is, the later you identify the risks, the more it's going to cost to fix it because you have to retrace your path all the way. So just because it's not an iterative effort, so even if you say your requirements are 100% complete, your design is 100% complete, your development is 100% complete, and then you come to the testing phase and you find a major bug. So those 100% does not mean anything to you because you have to revisit everything. 
so in so, uh, in a water more in a waterfall model so we are talking about waterfall so many it's a sequential um yeah. thing you have to wait that the previous is done before Correct. you can move and then etc Correct. so um, what i would recommend my uh, clients is basically to start risk management even before you start your requirements uh, think about requirements as, as soon as you know your intended use and your user needs uh think from a risk management point of view uh, think from a risk point of view what are the single point of failures uh, at a high level first and then even uh, once you get that done you can tie into your initial set of requirements so can we say that uh, thinking or working on risk management is not a question of regulation or documents to be presented to the authorities um, it's more about project management also absolutely it ties in very closely to project management so um I suppose also that when we talk about risk management, it's not like uh, done only once. It's something that is really uh, yeah, absolutely. Life. So your risk based, uh, I mean, your risk assessment is going to happen in every phase of your project. So right from design and development uh, down to validation, testing, and transfer to manufacturing, um, the risk management file is going to start right from the start day you start the project. So, so according to me, uh, you have to think on those lines. Uh, while even drafting your requirements or uh, even having your requirements and from a risk point of view you you generate some test cases and tie it back to your requirements even before the implementation is done that's a good strategy so yeah so uh, risk management is also uh, clear that you have if i can say some a list of risks and uh, maybe some mitigation that you are working on and absolutely then... so in the medical devices world right so the risk management standards have slightly changed now uh, with the release of the 14971 uh, 2019 edition and in 2007 edition we all we used to care about is to uh, uh, we have a concept called alar so we have to reduce the risk to as low as reasonably possible yeah and uh, we were pretty much happy but practic in a practical standpoint it's uh, it's much more difficult to achieve so there are uh, benefits which outweigh the risks by at most uh, occasions because these projects are complex and the intended use is also complex so just because you have a uh, risk it doesn't mean that you don't execute the project at all so yeah. we have to think about the benefits as well so in 14971 2019 edition we what, what do we do is we have a an attribute called uh, risk versus benefits so if you cannot mitigate the uh, risk by 100% it's still okay if you can say the benefits outweigh the risk so exactly. that is something we kind of do um uh, we take that risk as a, 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 a with a grain of salt and then we continue with the product development yeah and uh, so it, this is a notion that is also important risk versus benefit Uh, so as you said so we have to reduce as low as possible or yeah. I mean, maximum even if uh, we have identified that the, there is no risk so we have to try to try to reduce it uh, but as you mentioned so benefits should be also on the balance so how you balance benefit and risk if i can say Hey, just a second. Do you need a EU, Swiss or UK representative? Then choose Easy Medical Device. We can represent you and also become your importer. Contact us at eo@easymedicaldevice.com. Um so your benefit is basically going to be uh, driven by your user needs, right? Whenever whenever you capture the intended use and the uh, and the user needs. so if there is no medical devices product in the market or a similar uh, product in the market already and yours is a very niche product which is going to change the lives of people um at that time when you have a risk uh, probably uh, if you if we do an analysis and see the benefit is going to be greater than the risk so we kind of go ahead with that uh, so you have to kind of convince the authorities that yes, yes your yes. benefits are higher yes so uh, if if an audit like if an auditing body like the fda does an audit right so um they will they will go ahead and check an fmea for example and your fmea or your mitigation score after mitigation is quite high and uh, that is quite possible uh, we cannot mitigate everything to a uh, to a low level um so we can certainly provide a justification at that time telling that uh, these are the perceived benefits of the product and then uh, uh, we can convince the uh, regulatory authorities uh, telling that we are going to take this risk in our sleeve uh, and at the same time uh, try to uh, uh, try to make the product as safe as possible from other aspects as well 
So you, you just talk also about FMEA. I mean, maybe the audience is not really aware about FMEA. So, um, uh, so this is one methodology for, for doing yeah. risk management. Yeah, there are so many methodologies. You can start with the traditional risk analysis. You can, there's something called an FTA, uh, fault tree analysis as well. Um, FMEA is a failure mode effect analysis that you start from the top down, uh, uh, I mean, bottom up, uh, from the component level all the way to the uh, to the integration of the product. So risk analysis is usually top down, FMEA is usually bottom up. And there is and, no recommendation uh, for for that. So you you use what you want to use. It's not yeah, like a, um, it all depends upon your uh, organization policies and uh, what you're comfortable in and uh, what's the scope of the project and so on. So I normally in my organization we normally prefer FMEs over risk analysis. Okay, because and it's more uh, we, we feel it's like if you start from a component level and and actually actually integrate it bottom up, it's a lot more effective. Okay. Um, so uh, this is mainly something, as you said, that we have to start er as early as possible. That mm -hmm. is uh, iterative. So we have to update it each time there is a new information. Okay. Uh, okay. You can use whatever method. You, I mean, the method that is more suitable for you. Uh, you have also to weigh it against benefits. So um, okay. you have made some of those risk management and you have had projects where you had to do those kind of things. So um, do you have, if I can say some, good or bad experience with uh, doing those risk management say, oh, next time I will avoid to do that again because we had some issues or, or this was really a great, um, a great strategy and we will redo that again maybe uh, next time. So um, a good example was my recent project. One of my, in one of my recent projects, right, we kind of overdid and went overboard on FMEA. So there were around 1,000 lines, 1,500 lines. Um, most of them, uh, so there were many overlaps as well. So we have to hit that sweet spot, that right balance where we have captured all the risks. At the same time, we are not spending all our effort on FMEA because that's going to escalate the project costs and uh, your budget uh, is going to run pretty uh, pretty thin then if you're going to do a very extensive FMEA. So you have to strike the right balance in any risk analysis or FMEA is my uh, first feedback. But at the same time, uh, we have to make sure that uh, um, we have covered all the risks and then uh, not hope for something to be caught uh, later in the product development life cycle as well. So uh, when we say that you have 1,000 line, maybe you could have 2,000, 3,000, 4,000. Yeah. It's not like, uh, yeah. it's, it's, it's a never stopping story. Yeah, yeah. Like, so uh, you, you can do it. It's just like, it's never ending, right? Just like your uh, uh, verification validation effort. You can, you can think of 100 or 1,000 test strategies for a given requirement. So where do you actually draw the line? What's the balance? So that's very important in every uh, every level of uh, the product's uh, development life cycle. So you, what we have to, if I can say, convince the audience is that uh, it will never be perfect. Uh, so yes. at, the, at the end, start, do uh, write something. And if you imagine new risks that are coming, so updated yeah. version two, updated version three, etc. Yeah. But each risk that you are identifying, maybe uh -huh. you will have to do an action to reduce the risk. So there is maybe or a test or, yeah. um, I mean, there, there, is, there are three uh, levels of uh, mitigation that are authorized by uh, 14971, design, yeah. alert, and- uh, Yeah, you enforce. normally do, yeah, do it by design. The prop, possibly the worst way to do it is to actually document it in a user manual or uh, put it on a label. That's possibly the worst tire of mitigation. Next best tire is testing. Uh, the 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 most optimum uh, tire is basically you address it by some kind of design so that you achieve that mitigation. Exactly, and uh, yeah, as you said, the 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 worst is just to say, oh, uh, don't. Yeah, we know the that. risk and uh, say that don't touch. Don't, don't touch. touch this you may get electrocuted, and e yeah, something exactly. Like that. And it's written on a small in a in an yeah. issue that nobody yeah. is reading at the beginning, so it's mainly something that uh, that can be a, a bit, yeah, exactly. A bit so if we have no other. Uh, uh, method of achieving uh, the de-risking, then I would say that's your last resort, but I won't consider that. So have you also uh, been on a project uh, where uh, the risk management was started really late and uh, you had to redo from the beginning and you and you have experience? Oh yeah, I mean, uh, in my previous organizations, there were projects which were based on purely waterfall. Thankfully, they were not very big projects, so we could afford to go back and uh, execute uh, several phases of the project again. But uh, I would say that's not a 
that's not an optimum way of to do things. So what are the risks by doing that also? Oh, the risks are basically, if you the later you find a bug or anything uh, or a non-conformance, it is going to take a lot of, uh, a uh, lot of effort going back to the uh, inception, uh, both in terms of costs and time. So basically uh, what is going to happen is if nothing else happens to the patient uh, safety, even then you catch something, then it's a problem. Exactly. And um, mainly it's also the fact that you have maybe to redesign your products. You have maybe to redo some testing. You have maybe to, to, to do a lot of things. So it's, it's mainly the, 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 the worst case that can happen for projects is to arrive at the end and find issues and or find some risk and then say okay we have now to redesign everything because there was an issue that we have correct absolutely so all your earlier effort may go in vain so that's the problem that is the problem if you if you kind of catch it just before releasing the product so what can be your kind of advice uh, to companies that are really starting to, or to or the audience now that is listening and they says, oh, yeah, uh, my, my advice it? is to actually implement uh, your risk management efforts as early as possible in your uh, product life cycle so that you kind of catch it. And uh, um, by doing that, your probability of discovering something new and you getting shot at a later stage is that much more less. So uh, you have experience also with FDA. Um, yes. So, um, what are maybe the the things that FDA are always catching up or the top top issues uh, in risk management that they are looking at and say, oh, you should have done this, or we don't accept that, or or is FDA yeah. like Most just of the things uh, now uh, FDA is catching up on is uh, is it really depends on the uh, on the device type, but then in general they are pretty uh, they are zeroing in too much on cyber security these days. Okay. So cyber security is an area where they kind of say your patient data is going to get leaked. Uh, what are the mitigations you are providing against uh, the data breach? Uh, how are you storing the data? And if it's a connected device, if it's connected to a network, then it's, it opens up a lot of uh, more security risks as well. So they are zero, they are pretty much zeroing on that. Uh, other things on FDA is like they don't recommend any uh, one strategy to for the risk management. They kind of when they audit, they are, they are looking for documents and your justification basically for the risk. So they don't tell you, although they give you high level guidelines to do risk management, um, FDA is actually, if you can convince the FDA that no risk management is required and you can justify that, that would be fine too. They are just telling risk management is a way to mitigate safety and uh, other concerns. Yeah. So FDA does not specifically say that you should do risk management in a particular way. Yeah, and uh, I suppose also that uh, you or the company is the expert, so they have to uh, convince also the authorities uh, about uh, those risks, about why they are, they are having a good strategy and everything. So the authorities are here just to listen and you have to convince them. Yes, absolutely. Great. Um, so in terms of that, so what can you do? What can you? How can you help the audience if they have any question or any issues here on this so uh, I, I you are a consultant so you can help also yeah yeah uh, sure um, i can definitely answer questions i don't know how much i can help in person but uh, uh, given the uh, geography and uh, my location here so uh, uh, what i do in my company is actually to consult with real uh, medical device customers and uh, help them uh, formulate the risk management file and also the design history file so if so you are uh, then if, if you are listening and you are in the San Francisco Bay area then maybe Kailash can be helping you also on this uh, on this uh, on this kind of topic. Uh so uh thank you Kailash. Uh so where people can follow up with you? Um they can definitely mail me uh my email id is kailash.kalidas@gmail.com so um email would be the best way to contact me and then we can take things further from there. Okay and I will put uh, also your linkedin and uh uh, your your details on, on the show notes if people really sure. want uh, to uh, to talk to you. So absolutely great. So thank you, Kailash. Really was a great uh, introduction, if I can say, to risk management and uh, when to start uh, risk management early in your project. I just mentioned that because you have to start early in your project. Uh, and uh, I hope yeah, this was uh, this is uh, also helping uh, the the people that are trying to understand what is risk management and uh, wh what they should consider when they are when they are doing that. So thank you for that. Thank you for your support and I wish you a nice day. Thank you so much, Monir, and thanks again for the opportunity. You're welcome.